Good morning from day 37. Uh, we, I'm just getting moving again um, at about 7.15. Uh, we just crossed, well, like 30, 20 minutes ago, just crossed the river. Obviously made it safely cross. Um, took a little break and I kept going. Um, so a hiker named Carson camped at the same area we did last night and then he was very nice. We all crossed together one at a time, but he went first and then me and Emily were kind of going on a, just because of the water depth and trying to keep it as shallow as possible, we're kind of going on an angle um, and going downstream and he kept moving along the shore so that he would be downstream of us in case either of us slipped. So very, very, very nice. Um, and he's the guy we, I just met his name and learned his name yesterday. So um, that's how much hikers look out for each other. Um, but yeah, so we crossed the San Joaquin River where the bridge was out. Um, we went 0.4 miles downstream where everyone had told us was the safest area. Um, and there was a current, but uh, I was able to do it across in my Crocs never felt uncomfortable the water I mean, only felt uncomfortable because of how cold the water was um, and it did reach the bottom of my shorts get like the bottom, bottom couple inches of my shorts wet so it was mid to high thigh deep um, but didn't get anything else wet I never felt a risk of slipping or falling um, so all in all uh, pretty safe crossing I would feel like uh, but again you know this is late in the season low snow year or average snow year fast melt so this was the best and safest conditions um possible like people um a week ago there was someone a week ago that got swept away by the river and had to be rescued um, or maybe even a couple people so um we just got lucky in our timing and got in the best conditions possible to make it safe for us um and so now our plan today is I think it's around like 18 or 19 miles. Uh, there will be another another river crossing at the end of the day, uh, but definitely not anything as scary as this. This was the scariest one. Now it's behind us, uh, so everything else will be easy peasy after this. I may have said this already yesterday, but these white trees which may be aspen or birch, I'm not sure. But the white trees and this scenery has really been reminding me of home. This is very much very similar to the Utah landscape up in the mountains by us. How incredibly lucky am I to be walking this beautiful trail right next to the gorgeous lake in the High Sierra Mountains. Doesn't get any better than this. I know I sound like a broken record, but I am just so in love with this life, this experience, everything. It really doesn't get any better than this. This is Hart Lake, the last lake about a mile before Selden Pass. Made it to the top of Selden Pass at 
6.8. I know Forcer is such a well-known pass. I never even heard about Selden Pass until I was on trail, but this is definitely eclipsed Forster in my mind in my in being my favorite pass. So here's looking back where I came from, southbound. And give me just a second and I will have a looking at where we're going. How beautiful that is. That right there is Marie Lake, where I plan to jump in for a swim. I think you've got this. Yeah! <laughs> old, it's old. <laughs> I'm sorry, you had more of a reaction to that than I did. <laughs> okay, that was some impressive rock climbing out of there. <laughs> I'm happy with that, but if for some reason we're feeling ambitious. Good morning from day 38. Yesterday, me and Emily went swimming in that lake and then just finished off the rest of the day together. It was a pretty easy day, 19.2 um, miles um, and not too much elevation gain. Today, I think our goal is looking for 16.3 or 16.7 miles is our minimum goal. Um, what that would allow is about 18 miles into town on Sunday. If we can do more miles today, we will. That would be great. The reason why today is like planned short mileage is because of the elevation gain. Um, getting to 16, whatever it was, 16.3 or 16.7 miles already puts us about 4,200 feet gain for the day. And any more miles we do are gonna add more feet to gain. So it just depends how we're feeling um, when we get to that point. It is after six o'clock already. Um, we had a no alarm morning and then I just didn't want to get out of bed. I made the mistake of reading my book for about 20, 30 minutes, uh, which really made me want to just stay here all day in you know, if we weren't, if we didn't have a certain amount of food that we needed to get to town and weren't hiking the PCT, where we are is a beautiful spot to just camp in the woods. We're right by a lake. It's really pretty. The mosquitoes are absolutely horrible, but um, yeah, <laughs> I should not have read my book in the morning because I mean, that took away my little motivation I already had for the day. So, you know, not every day do we feel like hiking like today. I really don't feel like it. Don't want to hike just not interested in it but the thing is I have no choice because I have only two days worth of food and that will be two days worth of solid hiking to get to town so even though I don't feel like it I still have to keep moving. I'm now in an even more sad mood. The, real, the reality of long distance hiking is not every day do you want to wake up and hike. But like I said earlier, kind of have no choice because we pack out a certain amount of days of food to get to the next town. There is still 25-ish um, miles, maybe a little bit more between me and Mammoth, so two days and I have two days worth of food. So I have no choice but to keep hiking, even though I don't really feel like it today. So I have no reason to be in a bad mood. Yesterday was 
possibly the most beautiful day on trail. It was my favorite pass. I was very much in love with hiking, trails, experience yesterday and today. I'm just not right now. And then I made even more sad because uh, hearsay, hearsay was that there was service in this like two mile stretch I'm currently in. And I was hoping to call Chad and hear his voice, but apparently it's Verizon doesn't have service. It was just AT&T. So these are all very, very small problems, obviously. But I was really hoping to hear Chad's voice to help me find some motivation for today. But sometimes, you know, just like working out at home or anything like that, it's just the discipline of knowing you have to do it. And even if you don't want to. is the staircase up to Silver Pass. Right up there in that divot is Silver Pass, um, but before we go up the pass, me and Emily made a plan to meet at Silver Pass Lake, jump in and cool off because it is another hot day and the good thing for lake jumping is that there's not a cloud in the sky. so. We'll be able to jump in and warm back up quickly. Okay. This is colder than the other lake was. Well, I'm not, I don't like cold, cold. Okay, nope, I don't know that I want to do this. This is technically Silver Pass, but weirdly, it's not the high point. We still have to go up there before we start going downhill. It is slightly after, it's like 4.15. Um, I spent the last two and a half hours um, laying out at the lake. Emily joined me about an hour ago. Um, she's feeling the same thing that I am today, just a complete lack of motivation to hike today. Feeling generally meh about the day. Getting to Silver Pass means we've not even quite hit 13 miles for the day. Um, somewhere I think 12 and a half, 12.7 or something, um, which we still plan to go another six miles today. Um, our original kind of thought was just four miles past the pass, but if we do six miles, um, it'll add an extra 12 or 1300 feet of gain, but We'll also, so we'll do that tonight and two extra miles today so that tomorrow into town is a little bit easier and shorter. So 
Emily described it the best way is that we're already feeling bleh about the day today. So may as well add on more miles today to continue fe feeling bleh about so that tomorrow going to town will be that much happier. So just trying to tell myself that this is all for the benefit of tomorrow. And this is still just something that happens when you're long distance hiking that some days don't feel like it. But you just gotta push through. Okay, these views are slightly better, but still, honestly, Silver Pass is still one of the lowest ranking passes for me. Just not that beautiful, and the staircase was just annoying as heck. I've got 1.1 miles left to camp and a miserable 800 feet to climb in that 1.1 miles. I am doing something I hate doing, which is having my water bladder and strapped to the top of my bag instead of filtering, sorry, mosquito bites, instead of filtering it and putting it in my water bottles. But in the time it took me to fill my bladder from the stream, because we there won't be one at camp, in the time it took me to fill my bladder, which is less than a minute, I got about 10 mosquito bites. So I will just have to deal with the bladder because to filter the water takes about 10 minutes and I wasn't about to sit there and get eaten alive. But one mile left, I can do this. Taking a break half mile from the top of the climb, but at least the views are beautiful. Made it to camp. This will be camp for the night. It is 6.45. Emily should hopefully be here within the next hour. But the best thing about this camp is that as of right now, as I've been sitting here for about a few minutes, there's been no mosquitoes. So I don't know if that's worth the climb, but there's at least one positive. <sighs>